Well, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zinga Show, episode number 343, with me, your host, Agostino Zinga. This is episode number 343. How you doing? How you feeling? Great, amazing. Last show, there was a bit of perspiration coming to the top of my head, so I decided to go a bit sleeveless this time to make sure that I don't sweat as I'm sitting here standing and sitting here speaking into this little webcam of mine and great microphone. Loving the mic, sounding pretty good. But um, what's new? What's new? Training, running, drinking tea as per the gamut, you know, of these evening sessions, you know? Nothing else has changed really, innit? Apart from that, everyone's going crazy about the off-white sale Jordan 4s that are meant to be coming out this weekend, right? The, um, what does what those little teddy bear dunks coming out, those SBs that everyone's getting? Uh, Grateful Dead, right? They're coming out as well on the weekend. Some bits and bobs with that. People are um, shocked that Supreme are doing a sale. That's interesting, right? Everyone's like, oh my gosh, Supreme's doing a sale. It's like, well, duh. There's a global pandemic going on at the moment, mate. Don't you see? Businesses are losing money. People are losing their homes. Kids are being left out in the streets to fend for themselves against roving gangs of Eastern Europeans hunting them for their hair that they can sell back home. I, I don't know if that's true. I just read out on the internet. It could be true. It could not be. Who knows? It's flipping. It's hard out there, brothers. It's hard out there. Brothers and sisters, actually. Yeah. Let me include everybody in this. It's hard out there. So um, nothing's really surprising me these days. I think I'm seeing things. I'm like, meh. It is what it is. Like, even the Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lane stuff, that should have probably been more, that should have uh, registered more in my radar a lot more. That should have been something that I would been like, oh my God, taking it back, like, oh, I can't believe it. But I can. It's 2020, isn't it? Standard 2020 madness. People are, you know, deranged. Um, earning potential has been skewed all over the place. And I don't know, it's just, uh, it's all up in the air. I'm not surprised people are going a bit crazy and deciding to win an argument by shooting someone in the foot. Stuff happens, isn't it? I'll be interested to see how he survived that one, though. That's an interesting one. How do you survive shooting a girl in the foot if you're a public figure? I think in hip-hop, he'll be all right, because it seems like you can't really get cancelled in hip-hop. It's, it's impossible, really, to get actually cancelled. It feels as if, like, especially if you have fans... If you don't have fans, it's an issue, right? If you're a smoke perp and you don't have legitimate fans that care about your music, it's going to be difficult for you to survive anything, right? Any kind of downturn in your popularity. But if you're an artist that has an avid fan base that will support your shows, buy your music, click on your stuff, then you should be okay. You could survive a, a whole bevy of things, which is a pretty sad indictment also a good indictment in terms of where hip-hop has sort of progressed over the years it's gotten to a point where you know where it's sort of um it's sort of self-sufficient in that kind of extent right even if you do get counseled by a label i'm sure an independent person will pick you up like you know i was assuming nick cannon he got dropped from or is it nbc or viacom and then suddenly there's diddy popping up saying hey come to revolt we can work something out over here. Do you know what I mean? There's someone always going to be willing to like kind of bring you in. And even if no one, even if they didn't have his own um, streaming network, there'd be somebody who has, who has the decision-making power or the, you know, introduction into rooms um, power that can definitely make a change and apply that sort of, you know, that finesse needed to take your career back on track again. But who knows? Let's see what happens. But anyway, before we get into all that good stuff, if it's your first time watching the show, and you like what you hear make sure you like smash that like button right also make sure you follow me on socials i'm on instagram instagram.com forward slash a g o s t i n h o z i n g a that's my full name agostino zinga search me on instagram make sure you add me on there make sure you add me on twitter too same handle agostino zinga all one word add me on twitter so let's connect and we can be friends in it we can exchange messages you can like my pictures i can like yours you know all that good stuff you know that kind of internet friendship oh look we're internet friends you like mine i like yours i save yours to my bookmarks because i want to jack your outfit you know well, standard things <laughs> but yeah um do that and i'll be more than happy with your help in that matter so many things to talk about loads of things to get into i'm gonna get a bit centered here am i centered i'm not really am i let me see if i can get centered there you go am i centered no am i there no not really doesn't matter loads of topics to get into loads of things to run on in so let's just dive on right deep into the topics at hand with you lovely people <laughs> number one we've got what's this that's kind of oh yeah this is pretty funny 
I love a good public freak out. I think you guys have known this from the stuff that I've been posting on this channel. And I thought this is probably the best way to maybe, you know, break the ass on the show concerning everything that's going on around the world. Let's get a bit silly. Um, <laughs> this is a pretty good public freak out. The end bit really kind of took me through the loop. Let me see if I'm going to play it in that for you. Boom. Come on. Stop, stop working. Oh, what happened to it? Yeah. Wait, one second. Loading there, I feel loading now. Yep, it's loading. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Come on. Is it loading? It's not gonna load. Come on, sir. Come on, come on. Still not loading. Nothing's happening. Ugh. I think I maybe got too many windows up in the background. Google Chrome takes up so much RAM. It's just frightening, man. You really have to watch the, the things that you've actually got open when you're using Chrome. It really is mad. Maddest, maddest site. You have, you know, don't get me wrong, I have more than 20 tabs open at one time. You know, it is a problem that I have, but hey, I'm going to get to stuff later. Just let me run my programs and be able to watch videos. You know, don't mess up my, sh my flipping workflow. God damn it, guys. Ba ba ba! Where is it? Come on, come on! Still, still loading. Giving me the rainbow wheel of death now. What's happened actually? Before we get into that, oh, let's talk about um United. United drew one one West Ham today. Disappointed with the result. I think, um, by and large, I think we've all kind of seen, we've all kind of noticed the level that we're at now as a, as a team, right? I think most United fans are under no illusions as to where we sort of stand, where our standing is. I think we've kind of been taken down a couple of notches over the last couple of weeks. And I think it's a good thing. I think partly, part of me thinks if we would have went into the last few games of the season on a roll, winning every single one, securing top four, maybe two games prior to the ones that we're playing, it would have given us a false sense of um, superiority, a false sense of accomplishment. I think our fan base is still divided and really split as to what we actually need and i think we need to come to some sort of common consensus that the team and the infrastructure isn't where it needs to be um obviously i'll, I'll talk a bit about it later but for the game itself um we started off extremely i think we started off okay um you knew what west ham were going to do they were they've been on a really good uptick since they've come back from the um from yes yeah, since they've started re since the restart West Ham have played really well, excuse me. Um, that signing of the guy called Sionchek, Sionchek for midfield has been, you know, he's been a real revelation. Declan Rice has really upped his levels. Not sure if it's him growing his hair has really helped. And then, of course, Mikel Antonio up front, man. Like, he's never looked the best out wide. He's always kind of had a lot more heart and desire and athleticism, more so than he's got panache. But bloody hell, man, his ability to learn how to play like a number nine in the last few weeks has been quite frightening he's taken to it really well like he does the, the pure basics backs up into defenders hold the ball up knock it into the wings run into the areas he's done every finish from outside the area headed goals tap into the box like it's really odd to find a player like him that's you know who showed you know who for lack of a better phrase was raw quote unquote um had obviously his attributes really fast really strong um incredible engine for that regard that's how he is right he can get up and down that pitch a lot and then he's been used in a number of positions for West Ham but to play him up front that was a real um, master stroke for Moyes who I've got absolutely no time for right David Moyes but that was a really good move so I was never expecting United to come and roll over West Ham do you know what I mean I always knew it was going to be a tricky game and we've obviously been, you know, I don't know if we're short on fitness, if the players are just tired or the pressure's getting to them, but we just don't look at the races at the moment. And it just started off that way. I guess the midfield didn't really get a handle on the game, which we essentially lost, especially when you're playing against a team that's sitting that deep. You need to get some sort of handle on the midfield in order to kind of stretch your position and move them around a bit on the pitch. We didn't do that. And then, you know, um, soon took that De Declan Rice and I'd say Mark Noble completely took over. They gave, gave us a lot of threats on the counter. Um, that Bowen guy on the wing who I think they signed from Hull, he would have been a much better signing than signing Daniel James, that's for sure. He looks like, he looks like a proper player. He looks in this, probably the same sort of 
class level as a as a McGinn at um, Aston Villa, right? So it makes you think really. Does if McGinn was available and this Bowen guy was available and we went for James, our scouting system's a bit off, I think, in my regard. Like, because James, much as I love the kid, there's not much ceiling for him as a player, is there? But hey, another point. So, um, of course, we start off in the wrong foot due to Paul Pogba's horrendous mistake. Um, big error on his part. He really flopped and fl- he really messed us up in that regard. Putting his hands to his face to protect his face whilst from the Declan Rice volley. Worked very very well hit ball, don't get me wrong. Look how he slapped it and was heading into a top corner or something. So, maybe it was better that he gave away the penalty in terms of it being a poor... I don't know. I, I, no, no, no excuse, really. He put his hands up. He, put, he should have headed the ball out. He didn't. And it went down 1-0. Already playing badly. And he was like, flipping hell. But I was actually quite confident of us, even though we went a goal behind. I kind of think like we respond better when we go goal behind nowadays. This, com- this current United is better off scoring really quickly and then holding on to that win or trying to fight back from a 1-0 deficit. But we're not really good at trying to win a game last minute, 1-0. I mean, like that doesn't really suit our sort of uh, way of playing anymore. We don't have the the players with the right mentality to be able to handle that kind of pressure in game and make the necessary changes. And our coaching team don't really seem like they know what they're doing when things go wrong or when they need to figure something else out. They don't seem to have any sort of quick ability to impact the game. Um, so yeah, I was a bit nervous, but I also thought we were going to come back. Then we started off the second half pretty strong, I think. Um, the one bit of intricate play between our front line, Greenwood, um, Martial, and I think Wamba Saka did a few bits and pieces, maybe Pogba, the one good bit about it. Um, and then it kind of birthed the goal from that, right? A very well taken goal from Greenwood in the books. But then, uh, other than that, the game was completely a bit of a no-show. Um, West Ham really offered most of the threat for the last 20 minutes or so, and we just looked laboured. Um, Bruno didn't have a good game. Matic probably had his poorest game he's had in a while uh, Pogba had a really bad game of course he looked like the mistake really affected him as opposed to um, the previous game um, he looked like he didn't he couldn't really get over it um, I thought Tim Phillips who meant the first half wasn't really that bad but he didn't look that much better than uh, than um, he did the first game he came back and I also I'm a bit dubious as to how much better Tim Phillips who meant is going forward than a um, than a Dalo really. I think he's been he's been unfairly treated by Soul Shark in that regard. And then of course up front, um Rashford just looks like he's not fit. Rashford looks like he needs a rest. But Soul Shark hasn't been able to re rotate the side to be honest, to be fair to him. We don't really have the squad to do it. And he doesn't necessarily have the coaching now to know how to get the best out of what we have available whilst being a bit clever. I don't know because there, there's some clever solutions that could have been done right you could have maybe not played you could have maybe not played Matic and Pogba as sitting deep you probably could have had Pog- Matic maybe playing alongside Maguire um, in order to kind of push the fullbacks up a bit more maybe you could have had I don't know a, a, a Fred playing in midfield alongside a Pogba and a Bruno maybe maybe you would you would lose a bit of ball retention that way you could have maybe had a Dallo maybe playing a bit further up in front of a Aaron Wan-Bissaka or Tim Fivoso Mensah to give you a bit more cover and also some athleticism on the right hand side to maybe counterbalance what's going on the left you can maybe pulled out Martial to the left taking off Rashford and played Igalo down the middle and have them sort of play in tandem there were some solutions there but I just feel like Solskjaer didn't really know what to do and he's that's the one criticism I have with this current regime I think obviously if we want to stick with Solskjaer we're going to have to trust him and just give him money to just buy the best players that he the player buy the players that he needs that fit his um, philosophy. So, um, yeah, philosophy. Yeah, that fit his philosophy. But if those players don't work out, right? If it doesn't work out in terms of you know, let's just say it's a tight game and he don't know what to do, he doesn't have the ability to change a game by bringing on a James Milner kind of level player. And affecting the game or bringing on a fullback, what well, you know how Mourinho used to be when he was at his pump, when he was able to like take off a right winger to bring on a fullback to then push people up, you know, whatever to double up on that side or to take off a, a center back and put a striker, another striker up front so he played with three, take off a couple of midfield. I don't know, those kind of um, really uh, radical sort of moves in game to sort of spark a reaction from the team, right? Um, sometimes positive or negative, he doesn't have it. So my only worry is that if you give this guy money and he signs the players that he wants and he doesn't necessarily do it, then you're just, especially if, if without a football director, I think I'd be a lot more, I'd be a lot less worried if we had a football director 
Like if we had somebody that was signing a certain type of player um, under the guise of playing a certain type of foot brand of football, so that even if Solskjaer doesn't work out, this more likely than not the next manager coming in will want to keep those players. I just have a feeling a lot of the players we have at the moment, if we were to get, you know, like a, a ball playing manager, would they want a Maguire? Would they want Aaron Wan Bissaka? Right? Like would those be their players? And that's like already nearly a hundred million pounds worth of talent which is gonna be, you know, writing off. And we we're, we're not honestly gonna be doing that, right? Because, you know, one's an England international or both England internationals starting. So that's not gonna happen. So that's any reason that's the only thing that I worry about with this stuff. What we're gonna do going forward really in the regard of managers and team. But hey, one last game against Leicester on Sunday. We could turn it around, you never know. We could sneak it, but it doesn't really feel like we we deserve it, really, especially off the back of the last few games. We really kind of let ourselves down, but I don't know. Maybe it's just a fitness factor. Maybe it's just a tiredness in general. Um, you know, I don't know. Let's see um, going forward on a Sunday, but that was disappointing, man. Really disappointing. Anyway, let's get to the video that I thought was interesting, right? Let's see if I can get it up here. Hopefully, my stuff is going to load now. Boom. It's this public freak out. You know, I love my good public freak out. But I thought this ended in a really cheerful manner, as opposed to the other ones I've been linking that have been a bit more, you know, they've been a bit more rowdy in nature. Let's see if I can get this up. Yeah, I know. That's what she said. I could hear it in your head. You're saying it's just off now. <laughs> Come on, load. Why aren't these videos loading? Or, this, or, the, or did these just get deleted? Is that why? Maybe it got deleted. I don't know. But it's not having it today. It just isn't having it. I have no idea why either. Come on, mate. It's a driver. He's arguing with a boy. The boy says something funny. They have like a little banter. There it goes loading now. Is it? No, it isn't. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Cunt, you know it. There you go. For what? Get going. <laughs> You're a little punk you? ass bitch. Go. You're like 45. And I will stomp Talk your ass in the ground. For what? Talk <laughs> Imagine someone saying they're gonna stomp your ass into the ground. That is a mad insult. Is it gonna load or not? Okay, shit, yeah. There you go. Bring oh. it up and you. Oh. You know, maybe maybe we stop this and move on because I don't think this is gonna happen. This this video or my computer is just not having it today. It's running super 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 slow. Maybe I've got too many things open at the same time. That could be a reason, isn't it? Quite possibly. Who knows? Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on for now. Next on the list, we have, um, yeah, Ruby Rose being an absolute legend. You see, this being shared a lot of the time, and this is really funny. So I'm assuming Ruby Rose, who most of you would be aware of if you listen to hip-hop, you'd know that she's the former flame of Playboy Carti and amongst other rappers, but, you know, someone on the scene that people have a lot of time for, for her looks and her uh, ability to rap on a beat, yeah? the latter being probably a false assumption, the former probably being the number one thing, but she's obviously... Um, decided to diversify her income stream during you know it's, it's tough times out there people have been people haven't got the ability to tour they can't play in front of live audiences so if you're in that kind of s sphere right in that hip hop sphere what else are you going to do you can't do much right so then you know what you look to only fans oh f the websites come out of nowhere they were originally started up as a place for musicians to share their music to only their fans and then suddenly got co-opted by a horde of sex workers from around the world right just lorry falls of them right um huge ocean tankers full of just you know sex workers and you know, yeah, <laughs> all those people, right? They just took over us OnlyFans and they've now turned it into its own little ecosystem, right? Where these women are sort of boasting and gloating online that all their simp army have essentially allowed them to buy Ray Rolls Royce convertibles in this case of Sukihana, or they've allowed them to buy homes, mansions, and houses like um, Safari and Erica Mena. So Ruby Rose is trying to follow in those luscious footsteps, right? She's trying to show that, hey, I too can get that OnlyFans um, bucks. But somebody exposed her <laughs> her skullduggery when it comes to it. This is a post from the old uh, Twitter. And the user says the following. It's up in the screen. It says, no, this is too funny. Ruby Rose is really finessing us, right? And there's a screenshot. The first screenshot is from Ruby Rose's Instagram profile where she's doing a bit of cross 
platform marketing, right? Um, she's obviously putting out some teaser content on Instagram and telling you guys that follow her on there, which is probably the place where she has the most followers. Hey, if you swipe up, you might be able to see me naked. She's got this really suggestive picture with her and her friend, and she's sort of like covered their bodies with a rose. You know, girls love roses and flowers. It's very suggestive where it's put. It's covering up her breasts and her bumbers, and maybe a bit of a JJ might be from a friend on the right, and you're thinking, wow, when you see that, you're like, you know what, huh? Ruby Rose, I've always loved you. I've always thought you were cute. You were the funny laugh. I don't know, whatever you say to these girls online, you're like, I'm going to swipe up and I'm going to enter my debit card. But then imagine to your surprise or to your horror, once you get the notification on your OnlyFans, which I have no idea what it looks like because I'm not one of those people that would ever do such a thing. I'm a bullying Christian. But if you do get a notification on your OnlyFans that alerts you of the tier that you've unlocked due to your acceptance to willingness, your willingness actually to trade your money for skin, this is what you see on the next screen. <laughs> you see this image? This is the image you see if you got that OnlyFans. She finessed everybody. She covered them up in the rows as if they were completely naked. But in fact, she'd done the best Photoshop job in the world. The best in the world. But then you look at it a bit closely, like, no, the Photoshop job was absolutely garbage. Look what she did to cover up the bra straps. If you zoom in a bit better. She covered them up with just a little bit of, um, a little, a, a couple uh brush strokes on the old um ig stories i'm assuming and a little bit more red here it looks like she added a bit more red maybe on the rose yeah she did yeah look at that she even colored in the rose what a clever girl to cover up a bit of the left breast sisters but what you actually get is this just a couple of girls in laundry and, if, and that's a wild thing too right this picture because back in the day right this would have been very suggestive. This would have really turned you on you would have really you would have got off on this picture of ruby rose and her friend in some I'd say silk or lace lingerie. It would have sent you scream. It would have sent you in <gasps> into ecstasy, right? You'd have been like, "Oh my god!" But we've been so desensitized to seeing scantily clad, attractive women, especially girls that look like this. You know, they're ten a penny. They're everywhere, right? They're sort of like they're growing on trees. It seems like in America, right? Every rapper's trying to pluck them off the little branches. Like, hey, come here, come into my sack. Right, you know, no pun intended, but you know, come into my little straw sack. Let me take you home to my family, right? Or let me leave my family for you, <laughs> yeah, in some cases. But now, the, this is like bottom feeder stuff. Who cares about a couple of girls and some bikinis? No one cares, no care in the world. But it's amazing that she's been able to finish it. And I wonder how much that is the what, how much that costs this person to actually pay for. Because I'd imagine what your lowest tier would be five dollars. Maybe if you're a hot girl, you'd be like, nah, f, f that. I'm going straight to a twenty dollar tier. That might be your actual tier. You start off at twenty, and imagine the amount of people you are conning. Because that's what it is, really. Finessing is one word, but essentially you're conning the people, right, into paying this fifteen dollars. Oh my god, it's fifteen dollars you paid. That is insane. But yeah, it's amazing to see though, as from an outsider, it's amazing to see girls being able to hustle or game the system um, in this way. And it seems like, you know, I'd assume the, the more attractive you are, the better it is for you, like everything in life. But it's also great to see girls of um, different kind of persuasions, different tastes, right, are able to succeed on there too. That's cool. That's bloody cool. But I wonder how many musicians are actually on there. People that, you know, kind of were the first um adopt uh, the early adopters of the app i wonder if they're still on there like hey guys go on you tune out acoustic cover of whatever song that's out at the moment so phoebe, phoebe bridges or bridges song that i've recently covered you want to check it out like and subscribe and then you've got to compete with this so unfair isn't it so unfair oh anyway let's move on for that one we got some mad news <laughs> absolute mad news about pret a -Manger, which I thought was interesting um, this is the headline from the BBC it says um, pret a -Manger to shut 30 shops and cut 1,000 jobs 30 shops and 1,000 jobs and if you're not from the UK pret a -Manger is like our it's essentially I would just, I don't know about the whole of UK but I would say from my observation it might be the number one sort of like coffee chain in the UK. And I, I remember reading somewhere that it's actually Costa, which surprised me because I don't see anybody actually going in them. But for the, from what I know, from the places I've been working at, the place where you go pick up your coffee in the morning, a little croissant, maybe a big get or something for lunch, um, salad, hot pockets, whatever stuff that you want to eat, 
usually you get it from there. It probably has the best range in food, I think, of the three. Starbucks, Costa, yeah, yeah. And maybe Eat. It probably Maybe Eat will push the Premier close. But for the stuff I like, it has the best option. So you see them everywhere, especially the places I work in, right? Like the kind of, you know, startup, designy, fashion-y sort of world, marketing places. They're usually located in areas where there's a lot of pret mangers right? So it's kind of the metro, the metropolitan hotspots where the trains and buses are connected. So you, you you honestly could, you know, you could chuck a stone and hit a pret manger They're literally everywhere. And, you know, they're fairly easy to navigate. Um, really, you know, cool business model. The actual uh, experience of shopping in there is really blissful right they have this incentive where um i don't know what it is if whether or not they give the staff time off or they give them an extra pound on their wage if they get a good report but whatever it is whenever you walk to the pret you always greet it with a smile people are always happy to see you and they go in above and beyond sometimes if you're lucky you can get a free coffee or two so you know it's always a good experience so to see to hear that covid is impacting this business this badly where they're having to close 30 shops and cut a thousand jobs that means that we're living in a whole entire new world that people haven't necessarily fully come to grips with i've slowly accepted where we are now i've come to fully believe i've come to fully accept that you know my industry you know being able to go and dj in places the electronic music scene dance music won't be back until next year like you know may if that right i fully accepted i probably won't have another gig until that time right there might be the odd warehouse party or illegal house rave somewhere around the places but in terms of actually going to a nightclub that's off my bucket list until next year just have to accept it but to see businesses like prayer monger that essentially you know what feeding the workforce of the uk for large in, in certain cities have to close sh- close up shop is frightening but it's also an indication of just how different the landscape is in terms of workplaces right those offices are closed they allow people to work from home or they're setting up satellite offices for like middle management people to come in it's really changed everything so all these places that were really dependent because it's it's a kind of a throwback in that respect right you obviously can't order online with delivery and maybe with their own app nowadays but Premonje really does rely on foot traffic, right? It's a bit of a throwback in that respect. Like it doesn't really have an online store that works the same way. If it, most of its money comes from its actual brick, brick and mortar store. So to see it close is like. Whew. Let's quickly read a bit of it from BBC. It says um, sandwiches chain Premonje is to close thirty outlets and expected to cut a thousand jobs after other shops as uh, at other shops sorry as part of a post pandemic restructuring. The company said the impact of the coronavirus on trading meant it had to make a difficult decision. Pret said it needed to f- reduce headcount across the UK um, to reflect lower footfall, rental costs and new safety measures. That's the thing in it because landlords aren't, they're not not receiving rent. That's the thing in it. It doesn't matter what's happening out there. I've got to get my rent on time. So it must be killing these these shops. Um, it did not say how many jobs would go, but a source confirmed more than 1,000. More than 1,000. God almighty. About 330 jobs would be lost with the closures of 30 shops. Pret said 339 of its 410 shops have so far reopened following the easing of lockdown. So still quite a few of them are reopened, but it's a lot closing. But I think anyone that worked in a prep in the service industry, I think every person working in the service industry that doesn't work in a supermarket, you have to have it in the back of your head that your shop or business can close at any time. Don't be that naive because I've been there before. I've worked in shops all my life, right, for the most part, for the majority of my career. It's only in the later stages that I sort of like, you know, started to work on an office or behind a laptop or, you know, remotely or whatever. But you have to know that most of, the, most of the people on the shop floor are usually quite intuitive anyway because you don't really especially in the shop floor and service and, and shop, yeah, in, in retail, you don't really get told anything. Right? Upper manager likes to keep a lot of secrets. It's all a bit hush-hush, but you tend to kind of be a bit more aware of what's happening, right? You notice someone walking in, say maybe someone in the stock room overheard something in the office, you share a bit of gossip, and, you know, you can sort of read between the lines. Or you might have a friend at head office that might give you a bit of news, but usually office people are told, you know, there's it's pretty easy to kind of tip. I'm sometimes oblivious or a bit. It's pretty easy to tell what's happening, but... I implore anyone that's working in the shop now, don't be naive, man. Start looking for other options. 
to make some money or start looking for other other ways you can make money or other places that you could go to like start thinking about it now because if Pret Manger is closing your little boutique that you're managing now at the moment that's cool and you know whatever it may be in Shoreditch that's gonna be on that's on the chopping block next for sure if it's not already you know or your little vegan bistro like those places are really at risk if Pret is closing it said continues it said sad day said but trading remains slow uh with sales down 74 percent god almighty from the year earlier the company said Pret is thought to be losing more than 20 million a month chief executive pano christu said it's a sad day for the whole Pret family and i'm de- hold on that's read it again they're losing 20 million a month 20 million so do you remember when everyone was saying not everyone but the people that i follow online on twitter right there's a certain contingent of independent restaurateurs or people that work in the hospitality sector. They were kind of bemoaning that once everything reopens, because of the lack of support from the government and because their prevalence or their likelihood of kind of bailing out and giving loans to, you know, corp- big corporations and big chains, that when everything would reopen, the nightmare for those guys was that the only thing that would be available on the high street would be like massive chains, right? Like your Starbucks and stuff and you know um your mcdonald's that's the only thing that'll be around there won't be any independent restaurants or stores anymore but pan this pandemic is basically proving that it doesn't really have any um ev- no one is safe right when the pandemic is happening because everyone's ability to make money is suffering unless you have wealth that just you know accumulates unless you have wealth that kind of gives you a buffer for a few years you're gonna feel the pinch regardless especially for those of us especially for the businesses that require to uh have there's like an exchange per month like outlay in terms of rent and bills that's what kills them because i'd imagine if you're a prayer manager the reason why you can afford to pay let's say if half a million in rent a month for a prime spot somewhere in oxford street is because you you probably take in about two million per month do you know what i mean turnover in your store um on the dead on a downturn so imagine if you have no if it, that income's been slashed by 74 percent 20 million a month is insane so no one that gets fired from prayer should feel um that they've been you've been picked on this is purely a numbers thing that no business no matter who is kind of founded by even if jeff bezos had had his his owning prep losing 20 million a month is going to make your billion dollar fortune dwindle very quickly um it continues it says yeah chief pano uh crystal said the following it's a sad day for the whole prep family and i'm devastated that we will be losing so many of our employees but we must make those changes to adapt prep family though really let's relax with that in it places that call themselves family or stick together we're in this together sort of stuff it's always they always they, they usually in my experience of places that insist on calling you their family member or making it more than it just being a job they're usually always scumbags it's just you know nine out of ten eight out of ten places that use that kind of language or that make you feel as if like you have to kind of give your blood to work here and you have to justify your existence every two seconds or whatever that nonsense may be they're always the worst places to work in always but they always you know bring you lure you in by the family aspect and you feel oh these guys are my friends then someone snakes you then you get looked over for a promotion then you have to work unrealistic hours then your pay gets affected by something and then you no one wants to answer your question there's always something with those kind of places so be wary but my heart because that's anybody that is working at deliver i'm sorry what a pre manger because <clears throat> it's going to be tough times for you guys man tough times tough tough times but anyway let's move on uh the, the next on list we have don't expect to see contest by 2020 was it 2022 this is from variety magazine (laughs) um just as another observation in terms of what i've been seeing but this is obviously mostly to do with the states so um it could it could but i think it's gonna have the same impact in the uk uh, or in europe for for sure because yeah i don't know it depends on it the major markets like italy germany france spain and the uk (laughs) will probably all open up the same time in terms of allowing people to party in confined spaces because so far the only place that's really open that's allowing people to rave is like um oh uh oh no places in madrid actually i've seen this pla- this place called black world skypers have people djing there there's obviously um that place in switzerland 
that everyone's DJing in at the moment in Zurich. That's a place that's popping up. But for the most part, I'd imagine the major markets all time coordinate their opening times, maybe. I would imagine so. That make more sense. Or they would be in a position where they can allow free travel between them, right? So if you're a German, you want to go to a, a UK festival, you'd be able to kind of come in and not have to quarantine. I think that's going to be a thing. But the US is still going to be a bit of a blueprint <clears throat> as to how they deal with it because you know the entertainment industry in the in north america i'd imagine is huge it accounts for a lot of people's um you know net worth and revenue so they need it to come back soon but this article from variety tells us that we're not going to have any live events until 2022 um this is variety don't expect to see concerts uh, before 2022 top touring executive Mark Geiger says <coughs> from Variety magazine I'll link it in the show notes for you guys to read it in full if you want it says Mike Geiger until recently the head of music at WME one of the founders of Lollapalooza sounds like he's not expecting to be attending any festivals in 2020 2021 Jesus Christus um, asked on the Bob Leffitt's podcast when he expects concert to return he said the following my guess late 2020 late 21 or late 22 he told them um and he told Leffitt that the problems of insurance going forward is a biggie when it comes to the reasons for the long delay though he says there are probably 20 the music executive elaborated he said the following look the whole thing is a show whether it's uh testing it or it's in the government, it's too infinite of it's too infinite of a world to go down. Okay. But in my humble opinion, it's going to be twenty two. It's going to take a long it's going to take that long before what I call the germaphobe economy to be slowly killed off and to be replaced by what I call the claustrophobia the claustrophobia economy, which is where everybody wants to go out and go back to dinner and have their life and go to festivals and go home and go to shows. My instinct is that that's just going to take a while because you, as you can see, there's super spreader events, sports shows, festivals, and anything in the classroom um, ain't going to do well while the virus is still present. Yeah. And continue to say, so my instinct, okay, let's carry, so this first bit is true, right? So I'd say the first bit they mentioned, I like how you kind of categorize as a germaphobe economy and then the, the claustrophobia economy. I guess that's, that's part of the reason, right? <clears throat> Let's say we get over the virus straight away in the last next couple of weeks or a couple of months. You're still going to have to convince a whole load of people that you've frightened to death via your 24-7 access to news that, you know, that this virus is going to see through their windows and, you know, suffocate their family at night whilst they sleep. You're going to have to convince those people to go out that it's safe to go back out again. Sorry. That's going to take a lot, a lot of time, uh, a lot of patience, a lot of effort, a lot of TV adverts and billboards and stuff. Right. And then once you do that you have to then hope the venues and places that they people can go to shows to see and for artists to go and perform at you gotta hope they're still around it's just a it's a really um it's up in the air and i'd assume once everything opens with a lack of places to go and perform at they're gonna be all heavily contested right so you're gonna have the same big conglomerates that were controlling everything before you know having a monopoly on all the venues because they're the ones that are backed by big corporations and they're supported by loans and all the independent spots that you know where people kind of get their start where you know most of the you know where most of the infrastructure for the actual scene is laid they're going to be completely left on their ass so that's the issue at hand so it really is just like a cure or bust if there isn't a cure or vaccine everyone's effed it continues it says so my instinct is that the world has a very long forced timeout um, a lot of people see the positive in it whether it's climate whether it's pollution whether it's traffic whether it's nature and whether it's animals whether it's their own beings and taking the pleasure and i know it's the frustrating maddening and incoming destructive but ah this is bigger than us and if you study history things like this have happened in the history and been super disruptive to normal society so here's a biggie uh for our lifetime yeah that's true that's a part of it that's really interesting to see though that even if you look back in history um you know any kind of pandemic has you know negatively affected the society of course in the in the immediate but it's also been beneficial but it's also been dealt with very poorly by the officials at the time no one actually smashed it even though we had all these accounts from prior years uh right uh, prior centuries of pandemics that swept across the nation and killed people indiscriminately we still haven't learned from it so don't think that you know your government has done an extra bad job Every, humanity's done a bad job in terms of knowing our history and how to be better avoid the problems that were you know that happened in the past we don't seem to kind of learn from it whatsoever 
um, that's a really, really bad way to go about things. But you don't really hear anyone talking all this sort of like hippy dippy. Oh, the climate, man. Look, the oceans all clear. People are hurting now. You know, you were into month, what, four, five or something. Yeah. Or something of lockdown properly around the world. People have are been without income. People are, haven't been without human contact outside of their close family and friends, you know, because that's a, I feel that's a big part of mental health, isn't it? just being able to be around strangers forget your family and friends you can see them whenever right if you want to go see them you can sneak out and go see them even if it was a strict lockdown but being around just random people even your i get that i get better people out there missing their commute to work missing that central line missing being packed on that overground train or a, a, a high brain it it does give you something it's 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 um unaccounted for it's something you can't really put into words but it gives you something it definitely does it makes you maybe look forward to seeing your work colleagues it maybe makes you look forward to maybe hugging your partner it does something it makes you appreciate whatever you do enjoy because you don't want to be in there but you gotta have it to not to not know what you want you know what i mean also know what you know what you don't want um it continues it says here there's no insurance against covid currently offered and even normal insurance policies are pretty scarce and hard to come by um the insurers are sitting on the table on the sideline because there's an infinity like there's infinite liability there's hey i got covid and this and that how do you prove etc i think the biggest companies can maybe self-insure and they can start everybody else has to wait till the insurance industry feels good so that's one uh, of the many many roadblocks in the way of restarting the vibrant economy that got shut down so there's probably 20 reasons insurance is a biggie um, and i don't know when that comes back either so that's a very good good point i think that's something I'm, i remember saying in the beginning where i thought when when we first went into lockdown my assumption was that okay we're gonna see loads of really cool in random kind of diy in, um, promoters start up and start putting on events and take us back to the old school days of rave in the 80s and stuff right i thought it's gonna be amazing right um because i also assumed that if even if clubs even with the if the virus yeah i assumed that clubs wouldn't reopen because the insurance companies wouldn't be willing to write it off and you know accept liability especially with the virus still blooming but independent diy you know sort of illegal promoters could do that because you know they're not abiding by the rules but then as time goes on you're thinking to yourself even those independent diy promoters would you really want to have your name to, uh, attached to an illegal party that went awry where somebody had covid or got covid or spread to somebody you wouldn't want to be part of that would you, you definitely wouldn't so it's a very um uncertain time right people want to get out and have some sort of contact and be around strangers especially for me right being an avid fan of the dance um, electronic music space or the dance music space um techno scene whatever but you just have to give it time you just have to wait be patient and just don't see it as a rush in it that kind of rush to go out is going to just put us into more bother but it's interesting to see this um you know um an insider kind of echo a lot of the force i've been thinking and also kind of you know let's talk about you know the idea that it's not going to be back until next year so you know anyone trying to save their summer unfortunately your summer is completely finished my dears it's completely finished let's move on do 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 what i want to talk about on here that i thought was interesting do, do, do. oh let's let's talk about kanye so kanye's had another breakdown um i don't know maybe it's you guys right maybe it's just me maybe i don't really um know what i'm talking about and i'm being insensitive but i found it very difficult to care about this sort of outbreaks that you've been having and mental breakthroughs or whatever they may be and this is coming from an avid kanye west fan right i was i've always been a big fan of his artistry i think more so more so i think he represents he is a truest form of an artist on that level right he gets to do exactly what he wants he beats his own drum um he is the consummate perfectionist um he pushes boundaries every single one of his albums you know even from through the wire upwards you could say every none none of them sound the same right they all come completely different um he kind of you know really blew the lid in terms of how he you know was able to produce and put music together in, in a collective wasn't afraid of using writers and various producers and flying people out to you know recording sessions in the middle of hawaii You're just a really eclectic and amazing dude and don't even get me started on the fashion tip right so i'm i'm a big Kanye west fan i love the guy but these breakdowns and breakthroughs he's been having in public lately have been really disturbing on one hand but also really kind of exhausting as a fan to kind of try and 
you know reconcile in your head right that the guy that you sort of loved and championed and or was championing you and you thought you saw your, a lot of yourself in that person reflected again you don't know the guy but you a lot of the values that you have about creativity and design and music and career and family value whatever it may be right it's reflected in this guy and then suddenly I guess you get older they get older they grow up and they get into other things their economical their economical earning power changes they get everything they complained about in life it suddenly comes to them right it suddenly that person changes and i guess you could maybe relate it similar to what people go through with their favorite youtubers right when you're following a little vlogger like an emma chamberlain went through this right where people were following her and she was like this weird quirky girl that had a you know a wicked sense of humor that people tend to like and then she you know she gets successful she becomes a big star on youtube and then suddenly you know that kind of girl next door personality that she had doesn't necessarily look as authentic because she's now wearing a Gucci shirt she's now got a background with an amazing you know um what do you call it uh an invisible staircase leading up to a massive bedroom right she's got a g-wagon she wears a rolex i don't know it kind of it immediately sort of like fucks with your head but you just have to accept that you know if that's the person that you fell in love with as a fan of that person you're gonna have to accept that they grow up and they evolve into a different person so the same thing happens to kanye but i think a lot of the fans of kanye don't really haven't come to grips with the fact that this just might be him you know people are saying oh he's got a problem there's something going on with him maybe not maybe he's just completely fine and this is just adult kanye this is kanye 40 years plus with four kids and a wife this is it like this is what you get like he's just in this sort of mode so he co obviously this is off the back of his rally um presidential rally that he put together which i think he was able to secure the, the signatures to be on the ballot right that was a bit of a shit show mostly in terms of its um production i think him not having a microphone was weird especially if you're asking people questions and asking them to comment and you know small enclosed rooms with no microphone it's just a bad look so that wasn't a good thing and you know of course the breaking down you know about you know, the abortions and all this sort of stuff was just way too much in it tmi for sure and i think that's happens a lot if you actually care about the celebrity i think i've realized that or the public figure you tend to get a bit because i'm not a fan of that whole put your drama online anyway i think it's really um it's really unbecoming it's not really a trait that i enjoy from men they have to gossip and talk about um their personal lives on the internet it's just not something i'm into but it it kind of cringes you out doubly when you actually admire the person it's like ugh. Oh, it's kind of like your friend doing something really embarrassing in public you have to be like oh, okay just let and then you know you just talk to him after about it but in this case you just gotta just cringe and hold it in so i guess after this rally um he, everyone it doesn't it doesn't go well and then as like clockwork as it keeps happening whenever he has an outbreak online whenever it's outbreak online or in public the the family goes to their pr or their publicist which happens to be a tmz and they feed him a story now i got no no way you can prove if the connections are actually feeding TMZ story, but it just seems a bit odd that every time he has a breakdown, there's a story to counteract that breakdown. Like, oh, Kanye is going through it. Oh, Kanye is mentally. It's just like yuck, man. I know the family don't necessarily they don't necessarily mesh with his ideals, right? I guess Kanye and the connections, but let's reach a bit of an impasse. Let's let's meet in the middle. If I go through something in public, don't talk about it. Don't feed TMZ news about my recovery or let them know that you've tried everything. It's just a bit yucky. So that's been a bit odd to see. But I guess off the back of that, Kanye went on another rant. This is the most recent one from what, yesterday or today. And it says, um, the first screenshot, I think this is, should be in order. It says, um, all positivity when the devil attacks, even if I never see my kids till they're 18. Because you believe white people on god north will never be exploited by a system of white supremacy which is you know in any other time if this wasn't kind of sort of like um buffeted with like you know the public breakdowns of cryings and then you know 400 years as a choice this wouldn't be a problem in isolation it's not really a problem in him saying what he's saying but because of everything else we know in context it's like Ish. next tweet says white supremacy at this at this highest um no cap okay we don't know what the picture says of the keyboard it continues that mj i'm assuming michael jackson told you about tommy before they killed him kim saved my daughter's life in the name of jesus it's god's choice only what i don't know what that means it says i will live for my children it says chris i'm in cody if you're not planning another one of your child children's playboy shoots which is a really really mad kind of um dig to put out there 
it obviously goes to show that there is some friction in a family concerning um, the Kardashians' prevalence to undress themselves in front of a camera, which always kind of seemed weird. Again, I don't think it's it's unbecoming to try and psychoanalyze people's relationships or to you know, you know offer any kind of opinion because love is love. You you know whoever it happens to be, enjoy yourself and knock yourselves out. You know, uh, spread and multiply, but. It did seem weird at the time when they got together, right? Kim Kardashian and Kanye, just because of how private Kanye seems to be with his private life, right? With his relationships, he's not very, you know, out there apart from Amber Rose. Um, he was, you know, you don't really know about the people he hooked up with and stuff. He seems to keep that close to his chest. And, you know, the idea of him being okay with being in a reality TV family, you know, the, you know, they're essentially North American royalty just seemed weird didn't it they didn't really marry um and this is not being a judgment too because i think a lot of people judge the kardashians too much especially that bloody annoying jamila jamil woman right Jeremy? she's always banging on about the kardashians are a to the to femininity it's like shut up no they're not right if airhead girls want to follow the kardashians and want to wear makeup and get birkin bags let them who cares right if you want to be an intellectual and talk about feminism and protest, do that too. But don't begrudge the girls. I just want a, a bit of, you know, a bit of mental. Because there's, there's, there's a lot of smart girls or quote unquote intelligent girls that watch the Kardashians because they like to just turn off their brain and just, you know, uh, transport themselves into this kind of mythical world. It's ultra rich, um, attractive people from Armenia. Like, it's not a bad thing. It's just weird. So... I just thought it was strange anyway, general the the marrying. So maybe this is a reflection of like, hey, he has an issue with Playboy. I think because Kim recently did a really tasteful video shoot, a photo shoot with them recently, um, and it's always been a bit of an issue, I guess, in that regard. So he's pointing out that business, and he's trying to paint Chris as the pimp of the family, which people have asserted for a while. Another one come and come and get me. We have another one about him talking about Larsa. I'm not sure if that's Larsa Pippin, um, Scotty Pippin's ex-wife. Who I remember, I remember seeing an art. Yeah, I think he probably is because I remember. I, I do remember seeing an article that featured. Uh, where can I find it? There was an article about. Let's see if I can see it. Larsa Pippin. Um, and her daughter doing of some sort of bikini shoot. Yeah, there we go. I got it here. Some people they did some sort of like twin bikini suit thing, which I'm not sure if this is a thing. <sighs> I guess most mums, most Hollywood Hill mums will be more comfortable to do this as opposed to the dads. The dads wouldn't be comfortable, right? Especially if it's like a, you know, an old money guy. He wouldn't be comfortable all of his daughter who, you know, is not of age or is underage or whatever, he, or is really young, right? He wouldn't be happy if he's really young um, daughter doing a scantily clad photo shoot right next to their paw because the suggestion is that you know oh my god your mom looks like your sister and then you know people are oogling at your daughter and stuff online it's just a bit gross isn't it so i'm assuming kanye is kind of alluding to that that he would never allow north to kind of be looking like this and this is a picture from people magazine it says live last a last a pippin is twinning with daughter sophia in matching butterfly print bikinis uh, again it's just a whatever picture i get last pippin on the left the woman that caused so much trouble between pippin and uh future is there in a bikini and so is her daughter and it's a bit like how old is the daughter 40 12 years old okay that's weird isn't it so i can imagine why kanye is doing this post she's massive for 12 isn't it this is definitely a basketball player she's like the same height as her mom but god that's a bit much in it right imagine you and your, your mom telling you to put on a bikini to go and do a photo shoot with her by the pool and she's 12 years old like what it's just a bit weird so i'm assuming that's what kanye was kind of getting at that he would never allow his daughter to do the same thing um which again i don't have any i don't have any problems with that whatsoever because i think that's a bit nasty man in my opinion uh we carry on we say drake of course that he's current deception he's got another one sorry missed in jesus name no cap no more cap which is funny hearing someone say no cap at the end of a, of a prayer right of, of a declaration of prayer whatever it may be it's always interesting when people get very rarely right i don't know maybe you guys can tell me an example but very rarely have i met someone that's got into religion late in life who has turned out who hasn't got into it like like a psychopath that just decided you know hey i'm going to become uh muslim or become christian 
it's just my my life choice now you know i think i want to move change things up a bit i've been leading a life of sin whatever it may be i've reached a bit of an impasse with my career i've had a bit of a breakthrough i've seen life differently i'm just going to decide to do this thing live my life via this doctrine very rarely do they just do that and just shut up about it right it just kind of that's just their thing and if you if you kind of move away move away somehow or not they tend to somehow affect your life in one way shape or form whether you get into an argument some sort of debate they have some sort of snarky thing they say online there's always something they'd really very rarely just say it's like you know they're very rarely just like go and do their religion like reading a book they would always it's always like and maybe it's the fact that you're when you're of age and you then become religious yeah when you when you become religious at a more mature age maybe it's the fact that you're so excited about what's happened to your life all the positives that have come from it right your mental spiritual self has been you know reawakened right you've had maybe some material things you can point towards and say hey look look at this thing i'm doing now i mean i mean look at the way i lost all this sort of stuff right i'm not drinking i'm not smoking right? all these things you can point to and you're just eager to share it with people but you have to realize that no one cares as much as you do it's very difficult to really realize that. it's sort of like when you go on holiday and you come back to work and everyone's like interested to hear your holiday stories some people are but some people are some people are but some people aren't and there's a real real small time frame between how long you can tell a holiday story you have to really just have the you know the five main points of what happened right maybe some flight stuff something that happened in the hotel some you hooked up with somebody whatever have your main talking points and you, you probably have a couple of days before even if somebody asks you hey how was your holiday don't tell them because they're not really asking they're just they're just trying to be polite um, it's sort of the same thing i would say but hey let's continue with the tweets um he says should i name more um which is always tempting in that regard because you know what you're doing there he says we can handle this like gentlemen he quotes his own tweet and takes a picture of it which i don't know why he did that but he continues he says here he says they tried to fly in with two doctors to 5150 me which i'm assuming is that thing that happens where if you are a danger to yourself they essentially come with a straight jacket and take you off to a, a medical a yeah medical facility is it a medical facility or is it a physician i don't know whatever maybe you go to the crazy house so that so they, so now we get into insight into maybe they are offering some assistance and it continues it's family anyway i've been trying to get a divorce since kim went met with mick in the waldorf for prison reform quote unquote Eek. so what he's suggesting that kim is um had an affair with meek mill that's random it could be true but that's random as hell isn't it we haven't heard anything about them too but maybe this explains why he took a little unnecessary dig at meek mill when he was having a conversation with sway and not sway uh, with big boy remember when he was in the studio in his studio for yeezy and he said something about how can you be talking about guns and all this sort of stuff but you're trying to fight for prison reform when you just got out of prison for i don't know or something like that i remember um bloody hell he said continues and says i got 200 more to go what does that mean that kim has been cheating on him with 200 people or he's got 200 more people to air out maybe maybe this is a manic episode because each line doesn't really make any sense in it when in in perpetuity or you know as one they don't really make much sense each line they could each be individual tweets but they're all kind of one thought which maybe is illustration that he's going cuckoo um it says here i got 200 more to go the next one says this is my lady tweet of the night chris chong on <laughs> that is hilarious i saw that meme earlier chris chong on that is really hilarious he's really it seems like he doesn't like chris jenner too much right that might be because of how close she is with drake that might be an issue because i think i think kanye is one of those kind of guys if you're cool with my enemy he'll be a little bit diff if miffed with you right some people like that though right now, if you have an argument with somebody but they happen to be friends with them too they'll just keep they'll just keep being both of your guys friends which i've always hated i think you just have to decide who you're going to ride with and just be it let it be or if you're going to be friends with that person that i don't like you can never mention a name in my presence again never which is very difficult right because it's going to make it awkward because you're going to have to think about everything you say <laughs> yeah <laughs> And the next one, this is Lil Baby, my favorite rapper, but won't do a song with me, which is super funny to imagine if that's true. Lil Baby is a new rapper in the scene, refuses to do a song with Kanye because he's too much drama. <laughs> how the tables have turned. And that's why I think is indicative of just how little these, because again, don't get me wrong, he deleted them all, but this shows how little these tweets really resonate with people. Because I think a Kanye of old, the Kanye of maybe 2018, maybe even a couple of years prior to that, he would have broke the internet with this stuff and again don't get me wrong it is causing some maybe it's because of covid 
we've got real life issues happening people are not that bothered but it feels as if no one really cares that much and maybe that goes to show that you know a person like little baby doesn't necessarily have the same reverence for a Kanye than the generation that came before him which maybe might be mine do you know what I mean they're a bit like oh, this guy's a nutcase he's a weeds a headache you know what I mean allow it it continues it says here it says Meek is my man and was respectful that's my dog Kim was out of Kim was out of line again throwing his wife under the bus Jesus I'm worth five fifth five billion dollars and more than that though Christ but y'all ain't listened to MJ and now y'all believe them I don't know what that means um, he says Chris and Kim put out a statement without my approval which I've always said I, I think they, they are feeding TMZ news which I don't think is good um, for heart family unity or harmony again I don't know maybe that's the way they deal with stuff they kind of use TMZ as their unofficial publicist but it's just a bit weird I think especially if your husband's going through something in real time you know what I mean it's like just deal with that behind closed doors well, but what do I know it says it continues it says um, Chris and Kim put out a statement without my no uh, approval that's not what a wife should do um, he says white supremacy at the end ish he says the future says the future of white sees the future the future of white president that'll be funny isn't it? if he did like a Dave Chappelle skit and came out covered in talcum powder and said do you like me now I mean that'll be super jokes so that was that and then I think Kim's actually responded actually that's been the update since I've actually spoken about it with a response basically throwing some coal or throwing some um dampening the flames of oh the family are throwing him under the bus they don't care about him because I still I think Van Lathan said it actually the other day in it or just today actually Van Lathan said this if I can find the Van Lathan one before we go there Van Lathan said something about Kanye Van Lathan right Kanye what do you say he obviously Van hasn't got that much time for Kanye as you've seen as he's proven with that video clip that went viral from him at TMZ but he said something else he said the Kardashians don't care about Kanye this is from yeah to quote to blog I'll put it up on your screen you can hear it before we got on this podcast there was an article in People magazine that said that the family again is concerned and I don't believe that they're concerned I don't think they give a I don't fuck. either that's a that's another like, topic too I want right to talk away about. I am putting it out there right now Kim Kardashian Khloe Kardashian, Courtney Kardashian, Rob Kardashian, Chris Jenner. Name all the names. You don't give a fuck about Kanye West. I'm telling you Agreed. right now. I'm asserting it. I'm no. not in y'all house. Y'all don't give a fuck about Kanye West. No well, fucking and, way. And you can't make you me believe too. that. No, I, I don't believe it. I'm just telling you what the article said. I agree with you actually 100% because there is no way that my husband would be out here making a fool of himself on such a public platform and I'm just sitting at home posting pictures on my Instagram and stories like everything is okay in the world. That's the bit that gets annoyed me a little bit. I think there is a bit of that kind of like, oh, if you only married a black woman thing going on, which I don't really get. Um, I don't know. It's just strange. Um, to suggest that somehow a black woman would have him under control. Kanye's acting out. And he's obviously acting out maybe because his brain's broken, maybe because he's actually going through stuff, like just in turn of growing up as a person, as an adult coming, you know, coming to accept his position in society and wealth does a weird thing to you too, I'd imagine, especially when you amass when you amass the kind of wealth he's eyes in a short period of time, right? When you become a self made billionaire, it must do something to your head um as well. It must not be the most healthiest thing. Having corporate sponsorships kind of pull you and pushing you in different directions. A really young family all of a sudden out of nowhere. He had one kid, had no kids and suddenly he's got four. Um that must be a real headache to deal with. And he might be genuinely suffering from some kind of mental disease or illness that we have no idea about. That's not for us to try and figure out, but from what we know, we know he's been clinically diagnosed with bipolar. So that isn't a fun time, I'd imagine, right? Having to deal with that in a public eye. But to just that uh, what black woman's gonna hold him down is come on, that's insane. Like what what does that even mean? He could just be an adult refusing to get help. Um it, I don't think it's indicative and again, maybe that's why we put too much we put too much onus on that. If somebody's tweeting or saying something else online, that means they're not thinking about the issue. Maybe they are. Maybe to get out of thinking about it too much and because you're living it every single day because that person's your husband uh, and the father of your children, you just want to post a picture just to kind of let off some steam. I don't know. It's the new world, isn't it? People do that all the time. Do you think because, I don't know, people think as if like, 
a family member of yours dies, God forbid, or something that you're not going to be on your smartphone liking pictures or going through Twitter, you're still going to be doing that. It doesn't mean you're not thinking about a person who just passed away. It just is part of it. I don't know. It's a weird reaction to have. But I guess that my assumption of that was kind of confirmed a little bit because of the response that Kim put out there. She wrote a statement regarding the whole issue, which I thought was a fairly well balanced, if not a bit, you know, it's a bit, it was a, in my opinion, it's unnecessary, right, to do that. But I think how they operate as a family and how they operate as a brand, they just have to be mindful of how they're perceived in public. They can't have people looking at them a certain way, I understand. And just in general, they've lived their lives entirely on social media. It would only be right to kind of, you know, correct or address what's actually going on with their family, especially in this such a public way. You know, this is the main, this is the big deal. You know, the, the man of the house is acting out on social, going through what we suppose might be a mental breakdown. You have to say something, you know, I guess. So this is a statement that um, Kim put out there, I think via Instagram stories that someone posted on Twitter. I'll read for you guys. It says, as many of you know, Connie has a bipolar disorder. Anyone who has this has a love or has a loved one in their life who does knows how incredibly complicated and painful it is to understand. I've never spoken publicly uh, about how this has affected us at home because I'm very protective of our children and Connie's right to privacy when it comes to his health. So mostly to do with Kanye, I guess, isn't it? She's not allowed to talk about this stuff in public, which I f which is fine, but I don't really think she should anyway, even if given the opportunity to. I don't think it kind of serves any purpose. It's not our, why should we have the right to have that information? You know, we're not going to do anything for him. It's like, for remember when he was going through his first tweets and campaign stuff and people online were psychoanalyzing him and being flipping um, uh, armchair psychiatrists at home. Like, just relax, you know, relax. Um, it continues here, it says, uh the prior the, the, to health i said but today i feel like i should comment on it because of the stigma and misconception about their mental health interesting way to take because she could have just said i feel like i can i can comment on it because of my name's got dropped in it and my mum's name you know i can't be having that but instead she wanted people to have compassion it seems it says continues says um those that understand mental illness or even compulsive behavior know that the family is powerless unless the member is a minor people who are unaware of form removed from this experience can be judgmental and not understand that the individual themselves have to engage in the process of getting help no matter how hard the family and friends try which is very true um i guess for, for me looking at it from the outside it's always interesting to see that fair enough this is a big issue and a really serious one but prior to this when maybe kanye was endorsing trump it was interesting to see how silent my social media feed was especially to some of the kind of more influencer type people who are so quick to post a picture of a post-it note of that kanye writ with their size or with the yeezy kind of you know um box or something or saying thank you to the team for sending them a pair of shoes or a jacket those same people are quiet as a mouse on social concerning what kanye goes through which is interesting because all the praise that they do online the ways that they show affection for each other's friends is always done on social but the moment it comes to supporting them emotionally when they go for a tough time it's all it's supposedly done behind closed doors which i'd never believe right it's always just you know they would rather avoid that bad pr because they don't want to get that you know that kanye stink on them so i'd assume those same people aren't the ones near him now who he probably needs i'd imagine right um he's probably someone that in his state of mind being spent spending that much time alone with your own thoughts probably isn't a good thing but that's always just the funniest observation those same people that are always quick to post their invite to a paris fashion week show don't see anything about the stuff that he goes through especially when it comes to the trump and politics they're like next one she says um i understand kanye is subject to criticism because he is a public figure and these actions at times can cause strong opinions and emotions he is a brilliant but complicated person who on top of the pressures of being an artist and a black man who has experienced the painful loss of his mother and has to deal with the pressure and isolation that is heightened by his bipolar disorder those who are close with kanye know his heart and understand his words sometimes um sometimes do not align with his intentions the losing the mother thing is interesting isn't it because this happened a while ago but it's like that's why people say that's why grief is such an interesting thing to analyze right it affects people in so many different ways like you could lose somebody today and just not feel it maybe or not react in the kind of conventional way for a, a prolonged period of time and then suddenly i've heard so many stories about it where it suddenly just hits you out of nowhere and you just go through a complete grief spiral so maybe this is what he's going through as well plus on top of his own you know 
predisposed medical or hereditary conditions that he might be he might have had that that you know it's, it's just interesting to see as an observation that he's still being affected by his mother's death somehow because this, this is coming from his wife then um, i would have to believe that he's still affected by it quite greatly especially considering under the circumstances she passed away do you know what i mean um that would probably hurt you a lot more that it was kind of an avoidable situation um but yeah it continues it says um living with bipolar disorder does not diminish or invalidate his dreams his creations ideas no matter how big or unobtainable they may feel to some that is part of his genius and as we have all witnessed many of his big dreams have come true of course that's an excellent statement from her she's a real ride or die woman isn't it that's what you one thing about the collections they can be annoying to look at as you know to kind of so psych to analyze right as one of the kind of hindrances to society nowadays right they're probably everything that most people claim they hate but i think it they serve us they serve a lot of good in society in that they are exactly what they say on the tin they accurately represent that vapid materialistic um lifestyle in la or in hollywood or any kind of glitzy place that you might live in or might aspire to go to but they also maintain this real core of family values everything is centered around the family um and, you know in some places in some cases like you know chloe Chow, chloe kardashian and tristan it can seem a bit weird that they kind of go through this on off thing you know courtney has that stuff that happens rob has his but they always keep this core of like let's hold the, it's everything or everything is done with the family's best interest or everything's done in order to keep the family tight and close and you know they can come to blows sometimes on tv and still be closer than most families are out there so that's great to see so i think that's a good thing and just in general be able to because i think le better women in maybe less worse conditions would have probably left by now you know especially i don't especially when you consider the current climate at the moment right with me not me just not a good example but you know with this kind of push to uh remind women of their agency right um to put women in positions of power of influence decision making no one would, she would be you know this press run that she would have if she kind of initiated a divorce would be insane right do you know what i mean own boss and she should she didn't take any money from him she let him have this let him have that and she kind of stood on her own two feet she would be on another level so for her to kind of buck the trend and sort of push against that and be like, nah, I'm going to be a down bitch or down wife. I'll take it back down, bitch. <laughs> I'm going to be a down ass wife and I'm going to hold my guy down until the very end, until I can't take it no more. It's amazing to see. It's definitely through sickness and health, isn't it? And the last one, it says, we as a society talk about giving grace to the issue of mental health um, as a whole. However, we should also give it to the individuals who are living with it in these times when they need it the most. So I definitely agree with that one. It says, I kindly ask that the media and the public give us a compassion and empathy that is needed so that we can get through this. Thank you for those who are expressing concern, Kindly's well-being and for your understanding with love and gratitude. Kim Kardashian West. I wonder if Jamila Jamil reached out and gave them love as well. The absolute a no fun son of a bee but um yeah that's a pretty nice sentiment and statement there i don't i think it's a bit much you can't ask for anything with people i think the moment what was a good moment of the the moment i saw tmz posting images of excess tentations lifeless body i knew you know that that press that arm of the press that paparazzi sort of media thing that kind of let's get the news out no matter what's going on and especially remember that kid that wore that um make america great hat in front of that um uh native american person how do you call them is it um american indian um remember that person was beating a drum and it was it came out that oh they tried to frame the story as if this kid was saying something insulting to the guy beating a drum and it transpires that that wasn't what happened but the news went to frame it that way every time i saw that sort of stuff i knew okay the news the media they, they have no scruples right they have no they have no moral compass they just want to stoke division or cause controversy or just keep the news cycle running so it's admirable that kim would want the news media or social media in general to be a bit more kind and to be a bit more forgive it's what they're going through but the fact that people don't like them to begin with, to begin with the fact that people don't like him to begin with too especially post um trump endorsement it's just asking for too much it's not going to happen no one's ever going to give them time grace space to heal and move it's not going to happen people are going to make the jokes they're going to say what they want to say and they're going to just gonna have to swallow it or not that's the bad side so that's what makes me think that you know you really couldn't pay me enough to be a celebrity at that level 
You know, of course, it's only reserved for a small amount of people. It does the tiniest amount of population ever get a chance to become that famous because you know they're obviously outliers. The collections and him and Kanye himself, he's an outlier even amongst celebs, isn't it? He's like the one, the one of the one percent. But God Almighty, look what you have to deal with. You have to talk about your 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 husband having a mental breakdown in public. You have to address all the nonsense concerning abortions and stuff. Imagine no, everyone knowing that information, especially if you're a woman. You know, something is things that you keep quite close to your chest, or you only share with your with the person that you're you know that happened to get you pregnant. But for everyone to know that you've thought about abortions or you've had some in the past, and for sure people are digging up information to find out if when she got the pill, it's just it's mad, man, mad, 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 mad. Hopefully they get through it. You know, it will be a good way to imagine if they get through it and then we get a cure. It'll be a good little you know celebration for people that care about them. But I don't know, man. It's just interesting to see from the outside, isn't it? That I think people just need to for fans of Kanye, let's stop with the he's going crazy because maybe he is but let's also think that this might also be his personality too right there might be instances where he's going a bit nuts and saying some manic stuff um he's going for an episode of course but i think this also might be just a glimpse into what his personality is anyway sedated or not he might just be this guy um who's a bit of a free thinker as he says right and says and backs who he wants and thinks slavery was a choice and doesn't rate um doesn't rate harriet tubman <laughs> Oh, absolute madman, absolute madman. But yeah, let's hope he gets better in it. Let's hope he gets better. Anyway, that's an hour of the Excellent Zinger Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. As per usual, it's been a pleasure to have you here. If it's your first time listening, of course, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe down below, and um, leave me a comment if you have anything to share. If you want to also do me a favor and you know make sure you follow me on the socials, Instagram and Twitter, you'll find the links to my profiles and show note descriptions. But until then, I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care, be safe, and uh, I don't know, just hug your close family and friends you never know you might you might not see them again <laughs> but yeah anyway take care be safe love you guys easy <laughs>